the virtual assets ecosystem is very new to St. Lucia. Juliana Alfred, Chair of the National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee, NAMLOC, welcomed the team from the World Bank and the European Union who conducted a workshop on virtual assets for stakeholders from the public and private sectors. St. Lucia's Virtual Assets Providers Act, passed in 2022, provides for the licensing and supervision of the sector. Despite the absence of registered virtual asset service providers in the country, the recently completed National Risk Assessment rated the threat and vulnerability of the sector as medium-high and medium, respectively, due to reported active participants in the international virtual assets market. Considering the recent revisions made by the FATF in terms of recommendation 15 new technologies and the growing presence of this sector in our region, the cooperation of all relevant stakeholders is very important in implementing measures that deter the misuse of the sector for illicit purposes. The training aimed to enhance awareness of international standards and best practices related to the virtual asset sector Matira Hutaru is the Senior Financial Sector Specialist at the World Bank. So we are talking about cryptocurrencies, which are kind of a very hot topic. So of course it's going up and down through time due to different scandals and issues. But we hope we'll, have, we'll see a stabilization of this industry. And at the same time we see international organizations and standard setting bodies are putting in place minimum standards which national authorities should be implemented. And this is our aim and our goal to make sure but San Lucia is getting access to the best services, is getting advantages of digitalization and transformation of financial services, at the same time is not putting at risk citizens and legal entities by assuming too excessive risk. Natalie De Souza, Executive Director of the Financial Services Regulatory Authority, FSRA, the governing body tasked with licensing virtual asset service providers in St. Lucia, underscored the significance of this workshop. We are getting now assistance where we can bring both the private sector public sector together and start networking and for us to ensure that we have the necessary tools that are needed for the supervision monitoring of that sector. Virtual assets, including cryptocurrencies, introduce additional complexities such as credit and ethics risks, liquidity risks, consumer protection concerns, and the heightened risk of money laundering, presenting a formidable challenge for supervisory authorities. Workshop attendees Andrea St. Rose and Ron Leo reflected on the key insights from the workshop. One of the things that was touched on this morning was the issue of fit and proper persons. When we deal with money laundering, we want to make sure that the people in the governance positions are well equipped to deliver the, on their governance um, commitments to the institutions. The workshop here today, the session here today, is actually helping persons in the private sector understand what are the distinct risks that may come with a virtual asset service provider and how exactly you can manage it. So this is extremely important in allowing us to be able to develop our financial sector to a place where we as a people could benefit not only in the traditional manner, but in new inventive ways. This training initiative funded by the European Union, is poised to serve as a model for replication in the OECS and CARI Forum jurisdictions. Its primary aim is to foster a harmonized level of knowledge and expertise among virtual asset service providers throughout the region. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting.